Hey, this is Christians Wake Up. And today I'm going to be talking about where did Jesus come from? Where did Jesus come from? Now I'm talking about Jesus, the name. Um, we know who people call Jesus. His real name is Yahuwashai. And we know, um, and if, uh, of course, if you're using Arabic, it's Yahushua. But we know that the name Jesus does not mean um, what Yahuwashai means in uh, Paleo-Hebrew, which is Yah's salvation, nor in Aramaic um, Hebrew, which is the same thing. It's Yah's salvation or salvation of Yah. That's the meaning of the name. Remember, the scripture says that he would put his name in him, in his son. So where did this name Jesus come from? Because you got to remember, there's the scripture and we're going to go to it right now. Actually, let's just go to it. Acts chapter four, verses 10 through 12. Let's go to it right now. Here's what it says. It says, be it known unto you all, and to all people of Israel, that by the name of, now, of course, in English, it says Jesus Christ of Nazareth, but it's actually Yahawashai Hamashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom Allah raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you the whole. Now, this was Peter who was on trial during this time. So let's get through reading this right here. Peter and John. Uh, verse 11 says, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. He's talking about Yahawashai, which has become the head of the corner. He's the cornerstone. Verse 12 is what I wanted to get to. It says, neither is there salvation. Listen to this. Neither is there salvation in any other, any other what? We're about to find out. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It says it right here. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, if you go outside and you look up in the sky, You'll see clouds, you might see birds, or you might see the sun shining out there. And at nighttime, you might see the dark sky. You'll see the moon and the stars shining outside. That is called the heaven. And the scripture said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, none other other name. I'm going to repeat it one more time. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So where did this name come that's called Jesus that is under heaven? Because it's not the name that his father gave him. Where did this name come from? That's the important question, because this is the name that people trust in. This is the name that people say that they have salvation by. This is the name that they say they're going to be saved by. So we have to find out where that name came from. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a Google search first, and we're going to find out where that name Jesus came from. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos about the name of uh, Jesus and what the name means, you will see that there is a big deception on what that name is. And actually, I'll put an image of the video that I want you to watch up on the screen that I've done so that you can see where that name originated or how it was craftily made to make you... Um, Worship something that that is not of him and, and something that he actually hates. Just watch the video and you'll understand more on why that name is something that you should not be using. But we're going to go even further right now. We're going to go to Google. 
And we're going to do a search here. Let's see. I'm going to search up, is Jesus a Latin name? Let's see. Is Jesus a Latin name? There it is right here. Is it a Latin name? And this is what we see right here. Original name for Jesus. The English name Jesus derives from the Latin name Isis, which sounds like Isis. So Isis, which transliterates the key or the Koine Greek name Isis. And see, it even says Iesus, Iesus, Greek. Or Aesus is also used to represent the name of Joshua, son of Nun, in the New Testament passages, Acts 7, 45 and Hebrews 4, 8. So this is where the name Jesus came from. It is an English name. And before there was an English language, there was a Latin language. And we know whose language is the Latins. It's the Romans. So this is something that they changed. They gave him this name. So it is not a Hebrew name. It's the Hebrews did not know a savior or a name known as Jesus. They knew the name that was their father's name. It was placed in him. That was Yahushua. Or if it was Paleo and they spoke Paleo, the old ancient uh, Hebrew, it was Yahuashai. That's the name that they knew. They didn't know a name named Jesus. So we want to get further into where did this name Jesus or Isis back in the Latin times, where did this name come from? So let's do this. We're going to do another search right here. We're going to do, and this is something you might have never heard of before. It's called the Military Order of Jesus Christ. Let's find out about some of this here. We see the cross, the Military Order of Jesus Christ. And... It's funny because when you look at the ribbon, the color's red, the Romans color. Eligibility, it says Portuguese and foreigners. P military and civilian, Portuguese, something to remember. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on that link right there, Military Order of Jesus. And let's just start reading. It says Military Order of Jesus Christ. The Military Order of Christ, Portuguese, see, it's the Ordo Militar de no so senhor Jesus Cristo before 1910 Royal Military Order of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it keeps mentioning Portuguese. The reason I keep saying the word Portuguese, because you got to remember, we've talked about the Portuguese and Spanish Inquisition. Where the Portuguese Jews were sent to the slave coast or the Gold Coast and sent from Sierra Leone over to the West Indies and the islands of the sea over there. Okay. So Portuguese real order, Militar de Noso, Senhor Jesus Cristo. Previously, the order of the Knights of our Lord Jesus Christ is the former Knights Templar. So now we're going back to an old time. I'm actually click, click on that uh, Knights Templar real quick because we're going back in history. Knights Templar. It says the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. Latin. The Papres Camillitons Christi Templic Salomonici, also known as the Order of Solomon's Temple. The Knights Templar, or simply the Templars, were a Catholic military order. So we're, now we're getting down to the origin of this name. We're going all the way back. 
found it in 1119. So all the way back during that time, we have, they were called the poor fellow soldiers of Christ. So all the way back then, the Knights Templars were the ones who originated with that word Christ and also the word Jesus. Let's see, they were recognized in 1139 by the Papal Bull, Omni Datum Optima. Now, I'm, I'm actually going to click on that too for a second. The Omni Datum Optima. Listen, it says Latin for every perfect gift. A quotation from the Epistle of James was a, pap a Papal Bull issued by Pope Innocent II in 1139 that initially endorsed the Order of the Poor Knights of Christ in the Temple of Solomon, which is called the Knights Templars, in which the Templar rule was officially approved and papal protection given. Additionally, Omni Datum Optimum promised all spoils from Muslim conquest to the order. See, this was all about conquest and made the order exempt from tithes and taxes. And here's uh, where it says it in their order right here. It says, as for the things that you will receive from the spoils, you can confidently put them to your own use. And we prohibit that you be coerced against your will to give any one a portion of these. So we see right here during this time, this was really all about money. It was all about money because there was... Muslims taking the spoils. And remember, they were the Catholic church. The Catholics were already in Jerusalem. They conquest. They took over Jerusalem. Rome took over Jerusalem. Then it said the reason why they started the Knights Templars because they took over or they were taking the spoils of the people the, from the pilgrims. Sounds like America, doesn't it? When they took over this land and then the so-called Indians were fighting back and taking their stuff back. And then they made an order called the police protectors, the ones who killed the Indians and different things like that and took back their stuff and started killing them. Sounds the, nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. The same way it was back then. They had pilgrims, people tra uh, traveling from Europe to come over to the Holy Land that they conquered. And they were taking their land. And it says, sounds kind of like what's going on right now over in Israel. Interesting, isn't it? Sounds very similar. OK, so now we see who we know who the uh, Knights Templars are. We you can do a study on that yourself and go look up who the Knights Templars were and what they did. Um, but we see that that order was all the way back and they used the uh, Hebrews people, T uh, Temple of Solomon, Knights of, what is it, Temple of, yeah, Temple of Solomon right here. They started calling their order after the order of the Hebrews, the, the poor Knights of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon. And they were called the Knights Templars, making it seem as though they were doing the work of Yahweh. Mm, OK, we're going to go back. So we have that. The poor fellows, soldiers, Knights Templar. Let's see right here. So we just want to learn a little bit more about this military order of Christ, the royal military order of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let me scroll down. Let's see. They were abolished in March 22nd, 1312 by the Papal Bull, uh, Vox in Excelos, issued by Pope Clement V. The Order of Christ was founded in 19 or 1319. So 1319, they were founded. And that's a different order. See, that's the Order of Christ, the military Order of Christ was abolished in 1312, but then all of a sudden the Order of Christ was founded in 1319 with the protection of the Portuguese, the Portuguese King Dennis, who refused to pursue and persecute the former knights. So this is the new name they have called the Order of Christ. They refu he refused to pers uh, pursue and persecute the former knights as had occurred in most of the other sovereign states under the political influence of the Catholic Church. 
All right. Let me see if there's anything else we need to read. Okay, right here. Yeah, I do want to read this. Heavily swayed by Philip the Fourth of France, Pope Clement had the Knights Templars annihilated throughout France and most Europe on charges of heresy. But Dennis revived the Templars of Tomar as the Order of Christ, largely for their aid during the Reconquista, Reconquista and in the reconstruction uh, of Portugal after the wars. There goes Portugal again. Dennis negotiated with Clement's successor, John the Twenty uh, Second, for recognition of the new order and its rights to inherit the Templar assets and properties. So all, it, it was just the the Knights Templars' birth under a new name, and the Military Order of Christ birth under a new name. They were just called the Order of Christ. Now they took off the military. This was granted in a papal bull at E X Quibus on March fourteenth. On 14th of March, 1319. Mm, okay. So now we have that and we understand that. So this is something that is important. Now let's, I want to click on the order of Christ. The order of Christ. Imperial order of our Lord Jesus Christ, Portuguese. Uh, simply named the Order of Christ is an order of chivalry instituted by Emperor Pedro I of Brazil on the 7th of December, 1822, on the basis of Portuguese Order of Christ founded by King Dom Dennis and Pope John the Twenty Second. So this is going back into the um, original Knights Templars and remember the military Order of Christ. So this is all the way back in 1822. So this is fast forward. But actually, I want to go in order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the search. And I'm going to put in the next one, which I know was that they were called. They were called the Society. Actually, I see it right there. The Society of Jesus. You've probably seen that sign before, the Society of Jesus, and this sign right here. But let me let me show you what it says right here. The Society of Jesus is a religious order of the Catholic Church. So this always leads back to the Romans or the Roman Catholic Church. Every everything that has the Order of Jesus, the Society of Jesus, the Military Order of Jesus, the um, Order of King of uh, the uh, Temple of Solomon, the Knights Templars, all leads back to the Romans and the Roman Catholic Church. So this name, where did Jesus come from? This name keeps heading right back to the Latins, the Romans. Just want to prove this further and further. Now, this is interesting right here. Once again, the Society of Jesus is a religious order of the Catholic Church. Now we get in, into religion. Headquartered in Rome, it was founded by Ignatius of Loyola and six companions with the approval of Pope Paul III in 1540. The members are called Jesuits. This is where you get the word Jesus or the Society of Jesus. They are called Jesuits. This society is engaged in what are they engaged in? Evangelization. So evangelization, excuse me, evangelization and a apostolic ministry in 112 nations. That's all across this entire world. In across this entire world. What was the sign that the um, Constantine conquered in? He said, in this sign, I will conquer the, the sign of the cross. That is their sign. The order of Jesuits, the Knights Templars all had the same sign. Remember, I showed you before the red cross also has that sign. And that's their sign across the world. What they do, the uh, health, there, there's this health. But we're talking about right now the evangelization, what is it? evangelization, 
Oh, that's a hard word to say. Okay, evangelization. So now we're talking about this right now, the order of the Jesuits or the Society of Jesus. 1514 is an important year because after 1514, here's what I want to show you. Remember I did um, Jesus of Lubeck and I'll put an image up right here. Jesus of Lubeck. I did this message. Go look at this message and, and research it out and um, watch this video. But let me go back to this article now. Here's what I want to go to. This, this uh, website is called slaveryfacts.org. And this has a lot of stuff that happened during the slave trade. One thing that I want to show, like it says, the story of you, the story of us, the story of America. The first slave ship that they talk about. The slave ship was named Jesus. So here we have the Society of Jesus having a name Jesus, the Knights Templars having a name Christ. And through that time, once again, all Romans during that time, once again, Latins during that time, we come from that. We come from the military order of Jesus Christ. We come to the uh, before that was the nice Templars. Then it changed over to the Society of Jesus. And now we have a first slave ship named Jesus. Look at the dates. It says Jesus was the name of the slave ship captain by Sir John Hawkins in 1564. Now, when was the order of the religious sect, which is called the Society of Jesus? It was 1540. So 1540, so 24 years later, after their society gets started, remember their, their thing is all about religion, spreading their religion. 24 years later, after that, the slave ship called Jesus or Jesus of Lubeck or the good ship Jesus. Let's read about it this. What has come to be referred to as the good ship Jesus was, in fact, the Jesus of Lubeck, a 700 ton ship purchased by King Henry VIII from the Hanseatic League, a merchant alliance between the cities of Hamburg and Lubeck in Germany. The same place where the um, Ashkenaz come from, Germany. OK. 20 years after its purchase, this, this is, is everything. The, the pieces are just lining up now. 20 years after its purchase, the ship in despair, uh, in disrepair, was lent to Sir John Hawkins by Queen Elizabeth. Mm. Hawkins, a cousin of Sir Francis Drake, was granted permission from Queen Elizabeth for his first voyage in 1562. He was allowed to carry Africans to the Americas. With their own free consent. Okay. And he agreed to this condition. He didn't though. Hawkins had a reputation for being a religious man who required his crew to serve God daily and to love one another. Sir Francis Drake accompanied Hawkins on this journey and subsequent others. Drake was himself devoutly religious. Services were held on board twice a day off the coast of Africa near Sierra Leone Hawkins captured 300 to 500 slaves mostly by plundering Portuguese ships but also through violence see I told you it wasn't no oh yeah yeah just come with me no also through violence and subterf uh, subterfuge promising Africans, free land and riches. Was that 40 acres and a mule mm -hmm. that we never had? OK, promising Africans free land and riches in the new world. He sold most of the slaves in what we know now as the Dominic Republic. He returned home with a profit and ships laden with ivory, hides and sugar. Thus began the slave trade. That's when the slave trade started. He was the first one to mass um, 
get slaves and sell them. And they saw how much profit he were make he was making and realized that African slaves, aka Negro slaves, were a commodity and were valued as um stocks, the first stock exchange. Okay, so we have that now. So now we know about these things, but let's look at some scripture now, because you know I love looking at scripture. I'm going to go to Baruch chapter two, right here, verses 30 through 32. What it says right here says, for I knew that they would not hear me. This is Yahweh talking to the children of Israel because it is a stiff necked people. So he's talking about the children of Israel right here. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, which means Israel is still in captivity. We're going to find out the reason why they are. Verse 31 says, and shall know that I am Yahweh, their Allahim, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. But I thought that, you know, as Christians, we think on the name of Jesus. That's because Jesus was not the name that we're supposed to be thinking upon. He said they would think upon my name. What was his name? Let's let's see what his name was real quick. We're going to we're going to see what his name is. Actually, I don't even need to do that. We know what his name is. Psalms uh, 68 4. Right here. Sing unto unto Allahim, sing praises to his name. So here's what the name we're supposed to be singing praises to. Extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name. It says Jah, but once again, the Bible wasn't written in English. It's his name, Yah. In Hebrew or right here, Yah is his name. Sing upon his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. That's the name we're supposed to be thinking on. We're supposed to be thinking on his name, not the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is not the name whereby you can be saved. It's his son's name, Yahushua, if you're speaking Aramaic, or Yahweh, which is paleo. Same, the same meaning, same meaning, just two different versions of Hebrew, but it has his father's name in it, which is Yah. G is not my father's name. His name is not J-E. Neither is it J-A-H, Jah. His name is Yah. No one can change his name. No one can change his son's name except for the father. That's it. So that's the name we're supposed to be thinking on. It said in the land of our captivity, we will remember his name. And then I'm going to uh, prove it even further that his name is so important. I told you it's all about his name. Um, Revelations 3, 8. What does it say right here? Revelations 3, 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. It's all about the name. It's all about the name and, and the real name, not the fake name, not the name. You, and you're going to see that this, this other name, this name, Jesus, I'm going to prove in the scriptures that is given by the enemy, our enemy, the beast. Right in Revelations. So it says, has not denied my name. Um, let's go to Revelations 11, 8. Let me just scroll. Ah, no, nah, just, uh, just Revelations 11, 
eight. Look what it says right here. And their dead bodies shall lie. Or oh, 1118. I'm sorry. 1118. I had the wrong scriptures. Yeah, here it is. And the nations were angry. Why were they angry? And thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants. So he's given reward to his servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name. Small and great. And should this destroy them, which destroy the earth. But go back to him and them that fear thy name. So how is his name not important? How is it that this replacement name, Jesus, is supposed to be the name? But those who are fearing his name, like us, the ones who actually fear the name of Yah and fear the, even the name of his son, Yahweh or Yahushua. How are we? the wrong ones when we fear his name, because we, we see what he said that fear my name. That means that you show respect to the most high, that you put him first because we fear his name. And don't use replacement uh, name replacement as something. Oh no, it's okay. D Jesus, who said that it was okay. Did the father say it was okay. Did the son Say it was okay? No, Rome said it was okay. And I don't know if you like me, but I don't roll with Rome. Ah, let's, let's learn about the blasphemer of his name. Revelations 13, 6, right here. And this is the beast that I was talking about. Actually, I'm going to read. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read right here. Verse four, it says, and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. So this beast, this Roman system, this Roman religion has a mouth that speaks great things and blasphemes. Let me, let me show you the things that they speak. And I, I, I was going to save this for another message, but I'm just, I'll use, I'm going to just use these clips again, but I just want to show you the great things because it says there, there was given unto him a mouth that speaketh great things and blasphemies. Here's some of the things that they speak. The Pope has the power to change times, to abrogate laws and to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. This was found in uh, Decreto de Trilatic Episcop Cap. So this is their rules. Let me show you one more. And uh, most people know this one, but I just want to show it to you. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. This is found in the Catholic record, September 1st, 1923. Now, let's go back to the scriptures. OK, I'm going to read verse five again. Revelation 13, verse five, it says, and there was given unto him a mouth. <laughs> we, we just read. We just saw those. Images up on the screen. But there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. What we just saw was at absolute blasphemy. Absolute blasphemy. Speaking great things and blasphemy. 
And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. Verse six, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Allah. That's what we just saw in those images. But look, to blaspheme his name. Now, what was the first scripture that we read before? There is no name given under heaven wherewith man shall be saved. So if the father gave his son's name as the name, which is Yahushua or Yahawashi, which literally means Yah's salvation or Yah saves. And we get this new name called Jesus, which does not mean you can look it up in Latin. Look, the, go to, oh, let me go to Google. Let me just go to Google myself just so you can see what Jesus means in Latin. Okay, here we go. We're at Google Translate. We got English to Latin. We're going to use his name that was in Latin, I-E-S-U-S. -S. So we're translating from English to Latin. You see it says Iesus. Now, when you switch that over from Latin to English, it tells you what it is. I-E pig is what it means. And if you translate it again, it's I as porcus. It doesn't matter how you put it. When you put that I, I E pig, I E, that is a pig. That is what it is. That's literally what the name Jesus or Isis in Latin means. It's right here. This is Google Translate. You can do this yourself. I actually, I just did it on the screen. You can do it yourself. It means that is a pig. It does not mean Yah is salvation or Yah's salvation. So it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't. Oh, no. Well, it just means that, that it's the son. It does not mean that. He said he would put his son's name in him. Nowhere do you see the word God. Nowhere do you see the word Yah. It says that is a pig. They knew exactly what they were doing when they made this name. It was a blasphemous thing. It was a, a foolish nation, foolish people. The Bible says that has swine's broth in their body. Let's go. Matter of fact, I, I just feel like going to scripture today. Let's go to that. Verse one says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. Talking about this, 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 this people. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation. See, it's a nation that was not called by my name. Now, we know that his true people are called by his name. But this people is not called by his name. So it's not his people that he's talking about. It's talking about another people who have been seeking him out. Now, we know who that is. We know for a fact. That is the Rome, that is Rome and the Roman Catholic Church, because they are the ones who took over Israel's Bible. They are the nation that sought him out. They are the ones who have translated our Bible. They are the ones who have given us a slave's Bible during slavery times and took out 90% of the Old Testament, 50% of the New Testament. It's been nobody else but the Romans, the Latins. So we know who it's talking about. There's no confusion on who the nation that he's talking about is. It's the ones who sought him out. Verse two says, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Why? How are they rebellious? Let's find out. It says, which walketh in a way that was not good. Mm. probably the ones who thought to change times and laws. Okay. After their own thoughts, the one who created a Sabbath, that's not the Sabbath of Yahweh. Yep. Verse three says a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. The one who changed his son's name from Yahawashi or Yah Yahushua to Jesus. Yeah that sacrificeth in the gardens and burneth 
incense upon altars of bricks. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all know who this is talking about. Y'all know who this is talking about. Like, like, don't y'all know who this is talking about. Verse four, which remain among the graves. That's a huge indicator. And lodge in the monuments. Y'all know what those monuments are. Y'all know those are the tombs. Which eat swine's flesh. Now, who introduced swine flesh eaten to us? 1619. What was the main course dinner? The main course food that they made us eat. The leftover, the horrible part, not even the best part of the swine. The most nastiest chitterlings, hog moth, pig feet, the things that we still to this day eat and think it's a delicacy, but it's only it was only slaves food. It was what they gave us, the leftovers. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. That's the catfish. That's the shrimp. That's the lobsters, the, 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 the cockroaches of the sea. Verse five, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. We know that from the Catholics all the way. Remember, these are the people who changed the name of our Savior. Yahweh said, these are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Verse six says, behold, it is written before me. I won't keep silent. I will, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosoms. He's not going to keep silent on this case. So I just want to, we just want to clear up who was the one who changed the name of our savior to Jesus. Now here's the reward for those who who stood, and I'm going to read, I'm going to end with that scripture. I'll wait, I'll wait to even say it. Uh, Revelation 22, verse 3. Look what it says here. This is the last book of the Bible. It says, and there shall no be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4 says, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. I can't wait to have my name stamped right in this forehead, right, right in that forehead. His name shall be in their foreheads, the one who obeyed him. And then the last scripture, which I did not have written down, but I know, um, I think I know how to get to it. Stiff. I think I just need to look at this word right here. This is what I'm looking for. Um, actually, I'm gonna read right here. This is end time prophecy two. This is when Yahweh comes and gets his people. Verse 42 says, as this is second Ezra two, verse 42, it says, I Ezra, who is Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion, a great people whom I could not number. And they all praised Yahweh with songs. And in the midst of them was a man a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted. So he was more exalted than everybody else, but he set crowns upon them, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? 45, he says, he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name, the name of Allah. Now are they crowned and received palms. So once again, this message is called, where did Jesus come from? Where did, this name, where did Jesus come from? Verse 46 says, then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hand? Last verse right here. 47. So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of Allah, whom they have confessed in the world. See, they, con they confess 
the son of Elohim, who is Yahawashai, who is Yahushua, they confessed him in the world. Now, let's, let's see if it was the name of Jesus or his other name. Look at this. It says, then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh. See, it's all about the name. It's all about his name. Where did Jesus come from? It did not come from the most high. It came from the beast. We saw that he has an image and a name as well. He's a counterfeit. He creates a counterfeit of everything that Yahweh is. So surely he would create a counterfeit image and he would, he would create a counterfeit name. You all know the image that they use, but the name that they say they, they are going to be saved by. Remember the scriptures. I said I wasn't going to want any more scriptures, so I'm just going to quote it for you. It says, at the name of, it says Jesus there, but it don't say it. At the name of Yahawashai, every knee shall bow. He's going to make the whole world bow, regardless if they like to or if they don't want to. But he's going to make them bow to that name. And it ain't the name of Jesus. It's the name that his father gave him, not the name that's under earth. The name is the name that his father gave to him, that he placed in him, that has his father's name in it. I hope this message was edifying to you. I hope that it built you up. I hope that uh, it helped you to see uh, the name of Yahawashai or Yahushua or Yeshua in the right way, that you see his name is important because his name literally means Yah saves. Hope this was helpful to you. Hope that You've grown from this message. And until next time, this is Christians Wake Up. And with that, I say, I'm out.